Okay, so today I'm gonna go over how to support dark UI colors, uh, which just means if the user enables dark UI or the dark theme on their iPhone, it'll update the app colors so it won't be, you know, this bright white if they want dark enabled. Um, so to start, I created a real simple uh, UI kit app. It's just a title label, date label, information label, and a background view. Um, in storyboard, it has this orange background, but in our actual code, we do some styling and add the colors. So a lot of times in the past, when you would create colors, you could use um, color literal, uh, which if you type color literal in, it gives you a little picker and you can pick a color or you know put in your hex code whatever you want um, so this text primary is using color literal text secondary is using red green blue and alpha values um, and then the two background colors are using a custom hex initializer so that you could just put in um, a hex value and get the color um, I got that from hackingwithswift.com. I modified it a bit to be more what I would like. I think originally it was a eight character hex, which included the alpha value, which I don't want. I'd rather just be able to specify the alpha manually um, and just made it a little bit simpler and uh, easier to understand than the way it was in Hacking with Swift. But, that's where I got it from. There's a lot of different ways you could check Stack Overflow, but it's not really important for this tutorial. So a lot of times this is how we define colors and that was fine until Dark UI got introduced to the iOS ecosystem. So we could see the issues arise when we try to enable dark. So right now light looks normal and then dark doesn't change, but you'll see that the the bars at the top you can't see now because they're white. Right now they're black for when the app is in light mode, but when you go to dark, the statuses and the time turn to white. And since we have a white background, that is hidden now. Um, and beyond that, it's just not a good user experience if they want it to be dark and they can't change it. So when we manually define our colors, we have no way to change that out of the box. Um, there's some ways you could do it in code, I'm sure. Um, looking at, you know, what the device is running on, is it light or dark, and manually updating things, but Apple provides an easy way for us to do it, which is with um, color assets. So what I like to do is create a folder in my assets uh, folder called colors and then within that folder you can add what are called color sets so we'll call this one uh, background primary which right now is white so we'll just leave it white we could create our background secondary so there's two ways you could add it you could right click and then do color set or you could use this plus button at the bottom and, and do color set. So we'll do secondary or background secondary, which is this gray color. So I have a little file with all these colors. So background secondary is this hex. And then to change the color, um, you click on one of these boxes um, and then do show color panel and you could put in the hex value, hit enter and it'll change. You could use the sliders and use the color picker, however you want to do it, but I just have hex values. So as you can see here, we have any appearance and dark appearance. So any appearance means light and the default. So before um, light and dark were a thing, there was only just the default color so any 
I think just means the default if they're running, you know, iOS 12 or some device that doesn't have dark mode enabled, it'll take that color. And if it's running in light, it'll take this any appearance. And then if it's dark, it'll take this other uh, dark appearance color. Uh, so I'll just keep adding in colors. So we'll do text primary now. And I might try and speed up this part because it's just tedious. Uh, one thing you could do to make this a little easier um, is if you hold the option button and click on a file, it'll open them up side by side. So if I close the left tab, now I can see my color values on one side and then actually change the color assets on the other. Okay, so now all our colors are set. And if you click on the folder, you can see all of them at once, which is pretty nice. Um, so now we have to actually uh, load them and use them. So instead of using our colors like this, we're gonna use a different initializer. So I'll just comment out these for now. And the way we do it is with UI color named and then the name of the color that we uh, named it in here. So it has to match these names. So I'll just change all of these to use named colors now. Now when we run the app in light mode, it should look the same as it did before. But now when we toggle to dark, it'll change to our dark colors. And toggling back and forth, we'll just switch back and forth. So that's why the, uh, the color assets are super handy. It's really easy. We don't have to add any code to make this happen. It's just handled. Um, by Apple for us. And then since we're using UI kit here, we're using UI colors, but we could just as easily, you know, make an extension for Swift UI on um, UI color. So we'll do this, we'll import Swift UI. And we could just make, you know, a function called to Swift UI that'll return the Swift UI color since they're different. And the Swift UI color should have a UI color initializer, which we just do self. And then if we're using Swift UI, um, we could just do our color, let's say text primary to Swift UI which will change it to the Swift UI color. Um, and I mean, you could do maybe some caching if you want in here so that it's not creating a new color every time. That's totally up to you, but that's the basics of how to use color assets to support light and dark themes. Um, I'm gonna do a follow-up video um, about better ways to handle creating these named colors because the problem, one of the drawbacks of using assets is that there's no compile time safety. So if we misspell something or if a color is completely missing, uh, the compiler doesn't know that. So right now, if I misspelled background secondary and run it, uh, it'll build. The compiler doesn't know anything's wrong, but when it runs, this is now nil and there's no color because 
we misspelled it. Um, so that's one of the, the drawbacks of using color assets is there's no compile time checks, but we can add some safety by using unit tests and verifying that the colors that we specify actually exist and are loading. So in a follow up video, I'll, I'll show how to do that by using a, an enum similar to the, the image asset enum I did in another video. This will be a similar process, but for colors. So I'll link it when I make it.